Hey you guys, what's up? My name's Jason and today I'm gonna be taking you through this cool little tutorial on how to animate this cute little creature. So let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't seen the previous video where I show how to create this creature, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description or you can wait till the end of the video and I'll have a link there. So let's go ahead and start animating. So the first thing that I've done is I went ahead and I put all of my background layers into one folder. So if I go ahead and turn that folder off, you'll see here that it's all gone because it's all in one layer. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and merge all of my layers together. So that way it's all one layer. So I'll select all of those and I'm actually going to make a copy. So I'll go Control J and make a copy of all those and then put them into a merged layer. So I'll right click, merge layers. So now I have one merged layer and that's all one layer and then I have all of my other layers still there just in case I ever need to come back and change things. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these layers now and put them into a folder also. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my character layer and copy that layer by hitting Control J once again. And what we wanna do is this is going to be our second frame. And so before we start animating, we need to turn on our timeline. So we're going to come up to window, then we're going to come down to timeline, and then we're going to hit create frame animation. Now, if yours says something else, you're going to hit this down arrow, arrow and you're going to change it to create frame animation instead of create video timeline. So once that's selected, we can go ahead and click that. And now that sets up a frame animation down here at the bottom. Next, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add in six frames. And we do that by hitting this little icon down here that looks like the new layer icon. And we're going to click that five times until it comes all the way up to six frames. Now we can go ahead and animate our character. So I'm going to turn off this group folder so we don't have all of those layers showing up here. So if I go ahead and turn these two layers off, you'll see there's nothing there now. Next, I want to go ahead and start by animating my second frame. So my second frame is going to be my second layer. So for now, we're just gonna worry about animating each layer, and then I'll go ahead and show you how to set that up in your timeline, so that way it plays as an animation. So in this animation, we want our character to hover up, and then hover down, and then come back to the midpoint. So he's gonna start out here, then he's gonna move up a little bit, move up a little bit, then move down a little bit, and then come back to this position, and then come down a little bit, come down again, and then come back up a little bit, and then back to this position. That's how our animation will play. So let's start with this second frame. So the first frame is already set up correctly. With our second frame, we wanna go ahead and nudge that layer up a little bit because we want our character to move up. And then we're gonna go ahead and use a tool called the Puppet Warp tool. The way you turn that on is by coming up to Edit and then coming down to Puppet Warp. And now you see you get this cool looking mesh all over your character. What this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to warp your character and animate them. But before you can do that, you need to place some joints on your character. The way you do this is by using your pin tool and you're gonna go ahead and click in a spot. So for example, we're gonna add a pin right there to the foot and then we're gonna add a pin to the top of the leg like so. So now if I were to go ahead and click that pin point, now you can see I can stretch that and rotate it. Now the whole character is rotating, but we're gonna fix that in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo. And then I'll do the same thing for all the rest of my legs. So I'll add a pin there, a pin down in the foot, a pin at the top of the leg, and another pin down at the foot. Now, like we saw when we tried to animate this, it starts to move the entire body. And you'll also notice the more pins we add, the less the body moves. So what we wanna do is we want to anchor the body. And the way we'll do that is by putting a point right here at the neck, and then we're also going to put a point here at the back. So now when I try to animate this, you'll see it moves much, much, much less. And if we wanted to, we could even add one right here at the butt. And now it doesn't hardly move at all. Perfect. Next, what we want to do is we want to add a pin to the tail so we can animate that. So we'll add one right there. And then we'll add one right there at the tip of the tail. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some pins into the antennas so we can also animate those. So we want to add in three so we have a bunch of movement in our animation. So we'll add one right there at the base, one in the middle, and one at the tip. Do the same thing on the other antenna, just like so. And now we're ready to animate our first frame. So we've already animated him so he comes up a little bit. And now what we want to do is we want to animate each part of the body. 
So as he comes up, we're going to have the legs straighten out and stretch out just a little bit. So if I click this point right here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch that out and pull it down. Same with this one. I'll stretch it out and pull it down a little bit. And I'll stretch this one down a little bit too. And you want to keep it as subtle as possible. So you don't want to stretch it clear down here. You want to make sure that it's just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm also going to pull these in a little bit more towards the center as he comes up. And then with our tail, because he's moving upwards, the wind is going to be pushing down on his tail. So his tail can move down a little bit like so. Then let's go ahead and animate those antennas. So as he moves up, the antennas are going to be pushed down just like the tail. So we can go ahead and grab these points and pull them down. So I'm going to pull that one down to there and pull this one down to there. Do the same thing here, pull that down to there and pull this down to there. Now we could add some pins into the head to keep it from moving, except I kind of like the fact that it moves the head a little bit because that's going to add a little bit extra animation into the animation itself. All right, so now we have our second frame. Let's go ahead and create our third frame. So our third frame is going to basically just be a copy of our first frame because as he flies up and then gets to the peak of his rise, he's going to actually sort of settle and all of his parts of his body are actually going to go back to the same position they were in the set first frame. The only difference is that he's going to move up a little bit. So let's go ahead and hit enter to solidify that puppet movement. And now if we wanted to, we can go ahead and turn this frame off and on to kind of get an idea of how those two frames play off of each other. Next, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this first layer. So I'll hit Control J, and then I want to move that up above my second layer. So now we have our first three frames, except on this last frame, like I said, we want to go ahead and move that up so it's a little bit higher than all the rest of them, just like so. Next, let's go ahead and animate our next frame. So our next frame, he's going to start moving down to the position between the midpoint and the high point. So let's go ahead and make a copy of this layer. And then I want to go ahead and move him down to this midpoint. So right about there. And this is the midpoint between our actual midpoint where we started our character off and the highest point he's been at. Next, I'm going to go ahead and turn off all of my layers, except for my top one, so I can only see that one. Then I'm going to come to Edit, Puppet Warp, and we'll go ahead and do the same thing once again. So we'll add a pin at the top of the leg, the bottom of the leg, and we're just going to go ahead and add pins to all the same exact spots we added them before. Next, let's go ahead and animate this. So as he starts to flow down, the wind is actually going to be pushing up on everything. So his tail, his antennas, his legs. So everything's going to start moving up. So let's start with the antennas. So as he starts to move down, those antennas are going to move up just slightly. And I'm going to move this part down a little bit. Same with this side. I'll move that down just a tiny bit. And this will go up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and animate the tail. So the tail will move up just slightly like so. And then we'll go ahead and animate the legs. So as he comes down, the wind resistance is going to push those legs out and apart. So we can move those out like so. Then we can go ahead and hit enter. So now let's go ahead and see how those two frames play off of each other. So it's going to go from there to there. All right, great. Now let's go ahead and make a copy of this layer. So we'll hit control J. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the arrow keys on my keyboard to push that layer down a little bit further. And with this one, I want it to line up with our first frame. So I'm going to keep pushing that down until it's about where our first frame is, maybe a little bit lower. So about there should be good. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn this layer off and my bottom layer so I can only see this one. I'll turn on my puppet warp, so I'll come to edit, puppet warp, and we'll do the same thing again. Then we'll go ahead and animate this. So he's going to be moving down. So everything is going to move upwards. So this will move up to about there. That will move down a little tiny bit. This will move down. And this will move up. And that will move up a little tiny bit too. Then we'll go ahead and animate that tail. So that's going to move more straight up like so. And then we'll go ahead and animate this leg out and this leg same with this one. Then we can go ahead and hit enter. And as this animates down, we also want to move our character down. So I'm going to go ahead and use my arrow keys and push 
this frame down a little bit more towards the ground. So that way it animates from up here to down there. All right, now lastly, let's go ahead and make a copy of this layer. So not the one we just created, but the one underneath it. We're gonna copy that layer and drag it to the top. And now it's going to animate from that position we just created back to this position. And then our animation will loop all the way back to our first frame, which is this frame right here. So now let's go ahead and see how our animation plays. So if we come over here to our timeline, we're gonna start on frame one. And as you can see, on frame one, we can see all of those layers. And the reason why is because we have them all turned on on frame one. The way frame animation works in Photoshop is whatever layers are on, that's what appears in that frame. So starting with frame one, let's go ahead and turn all of them off except for our first layer. Then we'll go ahead and move on to frame two and frame one is on, on frame two. So let's go ahead and turn that off and turn on our frame two layer. Then let's come to frame three and we'll do the same thing. So turn off frame one and come up to frame three or layer three. And we're gonna continue to do this all the way to our last frame. All right, now let's go ahead and click through those and see how they play. All right, let's go ahead and play it now. So the way we play it is by hitting this play button down here. And it doesn't look right. Something about it doesn't look correct. And I think it's the placement of our character as he's going up and down. So he starts there and he moves to there. And I already see the problem here is that he's not moving up enough. So on my frame two, what I want to do is come down to that layer and using my arrow keys, I'm going to push that frame up a little bit like so. So now he should appear to be moving more upwards when that frame happens. Then we'll go to frame three and frame three needs to move up also. So I'll come to that layer and push it up with my arrow keys. Also, I need to turn off my group folder because somehow that got turned on on this frame. So now let's switch between those two and see how that looks. So now it's moving up a lot more. Let me go to frame four and we need to move that one down a little bit. So I'll go ahead and push that down just the tiniest bit like so. So now if we move between those two, he actually is moving down. Now, then if we come to frame five, he's also moving down. Frame six, he needs to be moving back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and come to that layer and push that up with my arrow keys just a tiny bit. All right, let's see how this plays now. So I'm gonna change where it says once right here to forever. So that way my animation will loop back over and over again. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these by holding down shift and then clicking across them. And then I'll come to where it says zero seconds. And I wanna change that to 0.1 seconds. So that way it plays a little bit slower. Now let's go ahead and play it and see how it looks. All right, great. So I think that looks good. I'm noticing there's a weird little bounce in this, which is actually kind of cool and cute, but if you don't want that bounce, we can go ahead and take that out. The reason why that bounce is happening is because from frame one to frame six, they're in different positions and they need to be in the same position. So what we need to do is we need to work backwards. So we need to go ahead and turn on our frame one for that layer. And then we need to go ahead and move this top layer down. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that down until it lines up on the same level, like so. So now if we switch between those two, they're on the same level, but that might mess up the rest of our animation. So like this one right here, this one is supposed to be a little bit lower. So now we need to go ahead and come to that layer and push that down a bit. Also, we wanna come back to our frame six and turn off our frame one, so it's no longer in that frame. So now that one moves down a little bit more now let's go ahead and play this and see how it looks. There we go. So now that little bounce is kind of out of there. And you can go ahead and spend a lot of time playing around with the animation in here and making it look perfect. You can add more frames in there and smaller movements to get a smoother animation. But I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys how you can create your own cool animations in Photoshop for either games or for animated films. My name's Jason and thanks for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll be sending you many more videos just like this one. If you're interested in learning how to create this character in Photoshop, go ahead and click that link and I'll teach you exactly how I created this character step by step.